Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So welcome to our fourth gathering um, of this 22 days of preparation for our month of February in the great activation of the I am. Sorry, 12 days, not, not 22. It's just that I am, maybe it's the heat. <laughs> I'm lost. So the topic for today are the elements. So let's try to understand why this gathering has been divided in the elements. Let's go into this. For all of you who are following this path, uh, for sure you know that this event in February is divided into five elements. So we have, first of all, water, then fire, earth, air, and ether. Um, so um, many of you have a question why there are these five elements or this separation. Uh, why do we have, why they are different? Um, why some of them are more expensive or had a certain amount of people. Uh, so today and through these days, we will talk about history, the concepts, why do we have these five elements, why we choose this to make the gathering. Some of you have been asking, why do we have a limit of people in certain groups? And um, why... Uh, why do we have these uh, limits in certain groups, uh, the limit of people, um, and why others doesn't have a limit. So let's go to that first. So group water, water. Why do we have 144 people in the group water? Well, basically because the number 144 uh, represents the amount of vibration that we are trying to reach in the um, uh, network of consciousness. So I will try to explain it again um, because we are talking about the vibrations, the, the, the filaments that are resounding that with this tension so we can hear other dimensions and other information so what we are willing to get is the vibration um, um, the vibration of the heart so every consciousness has a different vibration to which you can connect so a different vibration okay so 432 is the one that we are looking for which is related to the heart so 432 hertz is the amount of vibration that we need in order to resound with the heart. So I will explain why. So what I was trying to explain is that um, every one of the chakras and parts of the body is vibrating in different hertz. So let's imagine that today all our music, oh, well, actually all our music is vibrating in 440, is tuned into 440 meaning that 440 is actually the amount of times that vibrates the note A in a piano. So when you, when you put note A and you play that note, it will vibrate 440 times. That's why 440 um, uh, hertz. But, uh, but actually, um, for... 440 is around this, this level of vibration, which means that it's in the mouth or the ears, the 440. Okay, so all the music that you can that you listen today is related to this part of the body in these chakras. So if you want to resound with the heart, you have to lower the amount of times that vibrates the note A. That would be the heart. 432. 432 times vibrating, that would be the heart, okay? So what we are trying to do is that all our music is aligned into, into the note A, 
in 432 hertz, vibrating 432 times, okay? Um, so that's what we are trying to, to, to have, hmm? uh, 432 is our key. So now, inside that, that vibration 432, what we need to find is the codes for the dodecahedron, which is the 12 faces that will open the doors for all the other levels in a huge spiral of expansion to different levels of consciousness through the 12 faces. So what I have to look for is that in that vibration, I need, I need to find the geometry of the network, which is 12 times 12, that allows me to expand this geometry through vibration. 12 times 12 is equal Hundred forty-four. Hmm? So in the auric expansion, the position number twelve is the number one hundred and forty-four. So the golden radio, the spiral, its position, its expansion throughout the space, the geometry is by the Fibonacci expansion. So it is one projected in one. One plus one, two. One plus two, three. Two plus three, five. Five, five plus three, eight. Eight plus five, 13. 13 plus eight, 21. 21 plus 13, 34. 34 plus 21, 55, 55 plus 34, 89, 89 plus 55, 144, which is the position 12 in the Fibonacci spiral. 12 times must be expanding the, the Fibonacci spiral to arrive to the 144. So 144 times 3, which is the soul and the body gives us 432. Hmm? So we need 144, 144, 144, which the code actually is 144,000. Zero, 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 spirit, soul, and body. Hmm? This is why we need to, vi to vibrate from the heart 432. 144 persons with a soul, with a spirit, with a body. Hmm? So that's the reason why we need 144 in the group of water. Hmm? The group water, we need 144 beings that will be going through the spiral of the Nile, going temple by temple, doing exactly this, taking each one of the numbers expanding in each one of the numbers, bringing the information until we reach this in the Great Pyramid where we all gonna meet. Okay, so this is the task of the group 144 from the water, okay? Of course, that this is the group water because it's the one that will go through water. All the path will be taken by the Nile. So in fire, we need to complete a hundred, uh, sorry, 1,296 people. So in the group fire, we need 1,296 people. And right now we have 1,000. Um, so we need like, 300 more, but today uh, we've been forced to close um, the inscriptions. Um, so I don't know what we are going to do. Um, so that's why I am 
constantly saying that from now on, please, if you want to be in the group fire, uh, write to the to the RCN Foundation, so we could put you in the um, in the waiting list. Okay, so we could arrange something. I repeat to all of you that um, there's no restrictions for vaccination and uh, there's no restrictions for anything in Egypt. Uh, a lot of people from those 300 people um, that we lack, um, they went down because of fear of COVID or Omicron uh, or if they need uh, or because of vaccination. But actually, in Egypt, you don't need that. So, um, so I recommend, uh, or I will ask for all of you to please help me share um, um, this with the people that you know that may want to come, and they don't know about this. Okay. So, uh, thank you. If you can. If you can spread the message so others can come. So why fire is 1,296 people? Because we will be joining water, which is 144. So this plus this, we have again this number, 1,440. Okay, so. Um, that's the number again, okay? That's why fire and water together. So this is why after water um, does the whole path through the Nile, bringing the information, the group water will be split into all the other groups of fire. So we have um, all this information spread um, spread around this, around the fire to ignite it, to enlighten it, enlighten information. Okay, the group of earth and air does not have a limit of people. Uh, so once we have the logistics of this, I will try to explain what are the elements and why do we choose the elements to be the, the groups. So why do we choose the elements to represent this? Uh, we choose the elements because we are doing this for the earth. So we are working to reconnect the earth. We are, we are working to uh, reestablish in a new path of evolution this consciousness of the planet. So we are doing this for the planet. So that's why we will represent the elements of the um, of the planet. Um, and the Greek people, uh, as we know, they established like five five elements that represented the um, the the basements, the fundaments of the universe, of uh, mainly the Earth and the, the planet. So um, inside each one of the elements, you can find more things, but these are like the like the huge parts in which we can understand the whole reality. So in terms of network, as we have been speaking, each element will be representing a specific geometry in the network. First of all, remember, first of all, remember that fire represents the tetrahedron. In geometry, in network, this is the net of fire, the tetrahedron. So all the people that will go representing the fire, the element of fire, have to have this in mind. This is the network of fire, the tetrahedron. Okay, is the holy flame, the divine spark. So element fire, tetrahedron. This dodecahedron is water, is the, is the network of water. So this part of the net is represented by 12 faces that project into 12 
different dimensions, 12 different colors, 12 uh, beings, 12 consciousness, um, 12 nodes, everything projects from here, the number 12. Okay. Remember, this is not related to the Greek philosophy. Okay. It's not the Greek philosophy is about Atlantean cosmology. Okay. So remember this because some people are asking constantly, but this is not in, this is not how it is. This is uh, in the Greek tradition. They said, yes, they said that this is other thing. Um, but actually this is water. Okay. Element of water. Um, so the group water along the Nile will have this in mind because this is the, this is the network that will download the information from water. Hmm? So after, after the trip of water, we'll be together with fire. So fire and water together will create life. Okay. And that's how it works. So uh, all the information that holds the water and the chemical of the fire creates the life. That's why both will work together. This is the network of the group Earth. This is the network of Earth, the geometry that represents the element of Earth. So uh, have this in mind. We will explain exactly what you are supposed to do as Earth, okay? But in the meantime, just remember the structure of your information, okay? It's an exahedron. So have in mind those who are the element of air that the icosahedron represents the air. Okay, so this is the element air and the network of air is the icosahedron, which expands all the information, bringing the message like the air around, spinning, bringing all what it was worked inside or created is expanded through this icosahedron. Hmm? So have this structure in mind, those who are part of the group air. And now remember, the last one is the group ether. Ether will be the octahedron. Hmm? Remember the shape. Octahedron, one pyramid above, one pyramid below. Hmm? That's the shape of the network of octahedron of the ether. So uh, as you see here, um, we have been explaining about how these lines, intention, connection, connects the information through the nodes, and that's how the network system works, um, and, um, well, uh, how a net um, sends information. So now you can understand, now you can know, is um is that each one of these structures represents one element okay so thing is remember that when we are all that we have been explaining about networks and how everything is is connected uh and how it works uh, so when we mention the elements, it's not that we are talking about exactly the water or a specific uh, stone or the air that is around. It's more about the structure of its geometry, which is its network. This is its network. So when we talk about fire, we will think about this network. Okay, We are trying to reconnect the network of consciousness. So that's why each element must be thinking about its own network, not only the element as something magical, but also the structures of how it really works. Hmm? Well, first of all, let's try to understand what, what ether is. What is the network of ether? 
To do that, we have to remember what ether means. Ether is something that um, it's an oil that in the past people used to use um, in order to take the essence of a flower or a medicine. Like they put alcohol, this ether alcohol, and uh, they put flowers on it, for example, like petals of a rose. And eventually you will have the perfume of the flower. So they would do, um, uh, they would do the, the, um, the perfumes of flowers, perfumes of, of uh, different elements um, because of this alcohol called the ether, okay? So um, what happened when you smell a flower, when you smell a rose? You can identify that it's a rose, even if you cannot feel it, if you can touch it, you in your brain, that smell brings you all the data, all the information of the of the thorns of the of the, uh, of the um, of the plant. You can feel the plant. You can know, acknowledge how the, its shape is. You can see the flower. So the essence of that flower is in the ether. Okay. So remember, ether is this alcohol that used to take the essence of flowers. Hmm? Um, so eventually the word became something much more philosophical. So you could explain something that you can feel, but you cannot touch. Okay. So like the essence of a person, the essence of a plant, the essence of a planet, the essence of a country. So stuff that you cannot touch that are invisible, but you can sense, you will call ether. So ether had the name of that alcohol used for taking the essence of flowers, okay? So the element of ether is that thing that we, that we try, that we use in order to identify the essence of things that are impossible to touch, but only you can sense, okay? Let's understand what the group ether is. Ether is the only one, the group that is not gonna be physically in Egypt because it's the essence. It's something that you cannot touch. It's something that you cannot explain. It's all around in different spots and it doesn't have a task in the physical realm because its task is about essence. It's about, uh, it's about uh, the perfume of the consciousness. So the task of the ether group will be to anchor the essence of what we are working in Egypt and expand its perfume throughout all the territory where they, where they find themselves. So it's kind of a very poetic work that the group Ether has, which is to be everywhere and expand that perfume everywhere. Okay, so that's the task of Ether. Hmm? Um, so eventually we will explain uh, how you're going to do it uh, in other videos, but uh, tomorrow I will talk about Ether, but um, now it's just to have that, the idea, okay? Ether. Let's go to the group Air. So group Air, what is the task of the group Air? Air is the one that expands the essence, is the breeze, the warm breeze and the cold breeze that help us move the essence, the perfume throughout the space. So if you have a jar with ether, so the essence of something, when you open that jar is the breeze of the hot and cold air that will push and move all around the essence from one spot to all the places, to every spot in the net. So what we are gonna do, um, what we are gonna do uh, with the group air is that it, they will spin from the pyramids and all the work that we are gonna do, they will spin with the hot energy 
and the cold energy to spread the essence that we are preparing there so the essence so the essence can be spread in all the ether group okay so um so the job of the of um of the air will be to expand energetically everything that we are going to do um as the rest of the, of the groups mm -hmm. spinning so earth the exahedron so what is the task of earth earth the main difference with air is that earth that that air expands and moves and earth is fixed and strong earth is the fundaments the anchor of all the other data all the rest of information if air will expand the data earth will manifest the data okay so we will manifest all that so the people that is in this group will have the task the specific task to be the anchors the columns to hold all the rest of the information to hold all the rest of the data okay so from the heavens to the telluric realm in the core of the planet that is the task every day of the group earth to hold to work with that okay um earth is the manifestation okay so fire tetrahedron fire will have the job of expanding the light of consciousness to igniting the consciousness throughout the network that's why this group is the one going inside the pyramid with the task of igniting the spark the divine spark of the of the consciousness um, inside the pyramid this group will have to activate the the flame the holy flame okay and what is that is the information that we have been receiving that that we will receive all that information must be spread and lighted in the network so we will go inside to ignite the spark ignite the spark ignite the flame and this this group fire will be divided in three uh, in three groups that is um, um, the spiritual level the emotional level and the physical level which are related to the trine flame so it's the wisdom love and will so this is the trine flame that you will have to activate inside the pyramid okay that's the task of fire to ignite the trine flame so what is the task of water it is to be the living memory water is life meaning that is the memory of life the dna the blood the cells needs the water in order to record information so that's why water is like a library so we will receive throughout the nile and every one of the temples the group water will take all that data within inside so we can put it inside the pyramid to be spread along the entire network that's why water will be the living memory so let's repeat how this is going to be the first week of february the group water will come and go throughout all the nile bringing information and becoming the information the library itself the memory living memory and then they will gather with the fire when they got together they create life they ignite ignite the life and becomes evolution so inside the pyramid we will expand all this information through the light of the fire that pyramid and that information must be held by the earth the pillars of earth will adjust the axis of the pyramid and then project 
each one of the axes around where all this information should go. And in order to expand all that from the high level consciousness, the group of air will be spinning and sharing all this information throughout the entire network from Egypt towards the world, the world. That will find all the ether, like the seeds around the planet, receiving this new essence so they can spread wherever they are, the perfume of that consciousness. Uh, so inside the pyramid, my job will be like the mitochondria or something like this. Uh, I will be the one uniting the information with um, with the flames and the data. So it will be like weaving the DNA and creating connections and doing this. So my job will be to do that. Um, uh, which is my task to be the rememberer, the, the one that put the members together that connect all that. All of this that we're gonna do in February has been done in other times, mostly in the Atlantan times. Who did this task? The ones that did this task were the people called Idilian. So there were three types of um, three groups of people of um, priests uh, in the Atlantan times. The main groups of priests that existed were the called Emenian, Arsaian, and Idilian. So Emen means uh, knowledge, wisdom, those who teach or to teach something like this. So um, basically, we're the group of people that like the teachers uh, with language lessons, um, uh, math, uh, chemistry, and all these kind of things. So they were teaching the main things to understand the whole. The Arsaian, uh, Arsai means to speak to the world. So basically, the Arsaian were the teachers that taught us about the main laws of the universe and how to use them in order to know to speak to my inner world and how for my inner world to speak to the outer world. Okay, so they were teaching to the politicians, the leaders and, and this kind of people to know how to communicate with the planet from within, with the others from the soul. So our science. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, our foundation is called Arsayan. Arsayan is in singular, so it's one uh, that speaks because it's an entity, and Arsayan is many, many people. So, um, so Arsayan uh, is that entity that speaks to the world or teach how to speak to the world and, and all that, okay? So Arsayan. So Idil means the element the element of nature, the basis of reality. So Idilian were the teachers that taught us how to become the earth, the elements, the nature itself. So they were the first alchemists, those who, uh, who understood how to become the world, so transform the world. Mm -hmm. So Emenian, Arsayan, Idilian. The Idilian were divided in five groups or schools. which were the water, the fire, the earth, the air, and ether. Hmm? So each one of them has a specific task regarding each one of the of the structures. Mm -hmm. So remember, the group of fire in that time, the Idilian, they, they were not only um, trying to become fire, they needed to understand the sixth path of reality, the four, um, the four stages, mm -hmm. 
Do you remember what the group fire needed to learn? No? Group fire has expression, experimentation, um, integration, and transcendence through energy, matter, and vibration with wisdom, love, and will. Hmm? So the school of fire needed to understand very well all this. Um, so water, what do they have to learn? What was the process of water? The process of water was basically um, 30 path. We have 30 path here to follow, okay? Which is a whole month. The 30 path is exactly the same as we have done um, uh, all this year. 10 days for the body, 10 days for the soul, 10 days for the spirit. Mm -hmm. So we have 30 path, 30 steps that we have to give. And then we have the tools that we have to acquire in order to manifest. This is manifestation. So how do we manifest through this process of 30? So we have 20, yeah, 20 tools. And those tools are in our fingers and our feet. So five sounds, five senses, five geometries, and five colors. So through light, through sound, through senses, and through shapes, we can manifest the wisdom of the water, okay? Throughout these 30 days. So that was the process that that they have to, to learn from, okay? Uh, group water. So uh, what they had to learn here, the group air, to acknowledge was the 30, the 30 steps, but not as manifestation like the water did, but as mind. They needed to, to learn the philosophy of all this path. So they were the philosophers trying to understand the 12 systems the 12 systems, which are the nodes. So you have 30 days in a process of learning these 12 points of view, which are the 12 colors, the 12 nodes, the 12 uh, constellations, the 12 months, the 12 everything, the 12 systems, organic systems, okay? They needed to learn about the 12 systems all the time. So Earth, were the ones that needed to leave the initiatic path physically, walking it throughout the territory, to live it properly from the spirit, the soul, and the body throughout the initiatic path of the constellations. Hmm? So the path of, of the spiritual realm, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, the initiated path of the soul, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and the physical body, the initiated path of the physical body, which is Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer. So this is the, the strongest path because they needed to physically experience the process that the fire were trying to integrate, which was expression, in, uh, experimentation, integration, and transcendence through being born, grow up, reproduce, and die. So this school teaches to die many times as a symbolic way, but you needed to learn. So then once you accomplish the four schools, you have the fifth, which is the ether. And ether is the look for essence, the alchemy. So it's in the pyramid and you have to learn about time and space and the essence of both concepts. Mm -hmm. So you are ready to become everything. 
So what is all that together is the vehicle of light that we call Merkaba. All together, that spinning in movement has this shape. Un toroide, a torus. So um, what we are going to do in this event is what the Idilian used to do in the past to become the elements. We need to turn ourselves into these elements in order to acknowledge all this data, okay? So it's not necessary for us to understand every little thing about this, but, but um, it would be good for you to acknowledge this data, this information to, to, to yeah, to, to have that in mind. So, uh, so you at least relate yourself entirely with that element and with that uh, information. Mm -hmm. So to remind you a little bit of the Idyllian, um, of course that we all have the potentiality to become an Idyllian. We all are Idyllians in potential. Um, so because we all have the power within to become the alchemist to create our own reality. So that would be, uh, that would be Idyllian. So first, before we could become Idyllian, we needed to go through the schools of the Menian to understand all the things, the basis of all things, and then through the school of Arsayan in order to know how to do, to explore all the things that we have learned towards the external real reality. And only then you were able to become the creator of your own reality and to be able to communicate and to become the world. Um, what we did uh, in 2020, from July 2020 until August 2021, the I Am Path was actually the Emenian school. The Emenian where it, it was the school where we learned a little bit about everything, all the basis of reality. So uh, that was the school of the Menian. And as I have seen, uh, many of you have taken all this, in, all this information and started to project it outside, to put it in practice uh, in your own life, in, in, uh, in communicating in a different way, uh, creating your own projects from that. So that is the work of the Arsayan to put that outside. And this February, we will be doing the work of Idyllian. So I would recommend you all to think about or feel about all the things that we have been learning from one another uh, along this path of the I am in the school of Emenian and then try to acknowledge all the things that you have been um, achieving by putting in action what you learn. So you started to become an Arsayan manifesting all that. The reason why I tell you this is so your body, your soul, your spirit, your mind can accept, can feel that you have within all this information, all this mind, all the all this knowledge, wisdom that you achieved. So this February, we could put ourselves into practice in the school of Idilian. The Emenian were the great professors of the Atlantean civilization. And they were forbidden uh, when the civilization uh, collapsed. Their scion decided to have a gathering in front of the Sphinx to promise to the protector that they would spread along the planet, bringing the message and someday, eventually, 
they all would come back together to say straight to its eyes that we are ready to start again. And the Idyllian, they became themselves the information and they kept the information inside to hide so they couldn't be destroyed. So this is why what we are doing in Egypt this time is to come back, open our hearts from the Idyllian, from the knowledge of the Idyllian, to awake all that data, the, all this information, and then to present ourselves in front of the Sphinx as our science, saying, here we are again, we came back. So we could start again to rise up the teachers, the Amenian, for this new consciousness. And this is why the event is organized according to the elements. Yeah. So tomorrow I will change the topic. We are not going to talk about ether. We are going to talk about Merkaba, okay? Because it's much more related to what we just said. And I will let ether uh, a little bit um, ahead, okay? Thank you all of you for being here as always. And as always, see you tomorrow at the same time. Uh, tomorrow, I will recommend you to, um, to practice the Merkaba. So try to be in a place that is not a chair. So try, try to, to have a place to sit on the ground and you are relaxed and flexible, okay? So we can put in practice a little bit the Merkaba. Thank you all and see you tomorrow at the same time.